forward. All right, David, you can talk, correct? Yes. All right, awesome. Me? So, yep, I hear you. Everyone else is muted. We're going to begin. Um, I just wanted to introduce David the way I met him, which was actually at one of our Shabbat dinners. Uh, David has a, um, a book that he wrote where he had learned more about what we were doing. And because of that, he came to Shabbat dinner. That's where I met him. He was actually meeting with Bernie Gross, who many of you might know. Uh, Bernie Gross is 102 years old. And I think Bernie is featured, not I think, I've read the book. Uh, Bernie is featured in a book of David that's called Life Lessons on the Greatest and Wisest. You can see it actually behind him. Um, <laughs> and uh, I like the book a lot. It's got a lot of nice little stories, anecdotes, lessons that you can apply to our own lives. And I know that David has free reign on today's discussion, so he can speak about whatever he wants. If he's speaking about that, if he wants to be interactive, we'll make sure to um, unmute everyone. Uh, but I'm just giving the floor to David. He can introduce himself better than I can introduce him. And uh, there you go. All right. Well, thank you. And um, it's great to be here with you today. And yes, uh, I, my name is David Romanelli. And I'm going to give you a little bit about my background. And then I'm going to share some stories with you. So I, I, uh, after college in, the, in 1996, I took a yoga class. I don't know if any of you guys ever tried yoga, but um, we saw there was a line down the block and it was a packed biz, a packed yoga class. So my friend and I, we quit our jobs and we moved to Phoenix and we er opened a chain of yoga studios and we made yoga really fun. We turned up the, the hip hop music and we advertised on billboards all over town that said breathe. And we made it really fun and we built a nice community, a nice business. And right around that time in, in 2010, my last surviving grandma was in a senior living center in Los Angeles. And I, I noticed how she was kind of depressed. And I, I realized that it's hard in America to get older maybe than it is in other countries because our elders, and some of you may agree with this, our elders don't always have a voice in popular culture. Um, it can be very isolating and lonely. I mean, especially right now during the pandemic, it can be very isolating and lonely. And I was in the yoga world where you have these very young yoga teachers who have like a big following on social media. And so people are looking to these young yoga teachers for their source of wisdom. And then you'd have like the 89 year old Holocaust survivor dying a lonely death in the senior living center. And so I realized that something wasn't right there. And I changed my career path and I started interviewing people in their 80s, 90s, and 100s all over the country. And I do these events called Drinks with Your Elders, where I invite elders who are often somewhat lonely and isolated, and I invite them into the community and they share their stories with younger people. So some of you watching this may want to be a, once the pandemic is over, maybe you'd like to be part of one of these events. And I wrote a book about it. I'm going to share my screen here so I can. Um, so I wrote this book that the rabbi referenced called Life Lessons from the Oldest and Wisest. And I've learned so many great lessons from, from my elders on parenting and happiness, longevity. Uh, just, just so much to learn. And I think that the one thing that I've, realized in my 20 years in the wellness space is that happiness is very tricky because you meet a lot of people out there who are have all their ducks in a row have a great career great family and sometimes those people aren't as happy as you think they would be and then you meet sometimes you meet people who can't find their ducks and you know life's all over the place and they find a way to be happy so what's the formula for happiness and, and during a pandemic is it possible to still feel joy. Maybe not the kind of joy that you're going out and celebrating, but the kind of joy where you can stay calm and you can find the simple pleasures and build a certain kind of resilience to overcome all these challenges that we're going through. So I just thought I could share with you some of the lessons that I talk about in my book and maybe you could take something from it. But really, I'd like to learn from you at the end of this what your tips are for longevity and resilience, how you're getting through this right now. So um, the oldest person that I ever met was this lady right here. I was living in New York City, 
and I, I was working with this charity that helps elders who are in need of, of just basic resources. And this lady was 108 when I met her, and she lived to be 111. So of the seven, 7 billion people on the planet, there's only about 60 at any one time who are 110 or older. We call them super centenarians. It's very rare. Usually, obviously, they have great genetics, but they also have a great attitude. You know, if you wake up in a bad mood every day, you're probably not going to live to be 110. So I just wanted to share with you a few of the great messages that I learned from this lady over the three years that I got to know her. Number one, the first tip that I learned from this lady is that she was married five times. So we call that resilience. And, you know, everybody gets knocked down. Uh, the whole world right now is knocked down. I mean, this is a real knockout punch globally. And one of the things that I've learned in speaking and in interviewing elders in their 80s, 90s, and 100s is that you, eventually in life, you're going you're gonna to go through something really difficult, whether it's a loss, um, an illness, um, like an experience like we're all going through right now. You can't go through life without getting knocked on your butt. And some people will forever identify with the way that they got knocked down. And some people get back up and they dust themselves off and they get after it. And it's really like resilience is a choice. It's an attitude. It's a state of mind. It's really something. Oops, somebody's, somebody's not on mute. You hear that? <laughs> Rabbi, do you hear that sound? There's a weird beeping. Yeah, what's that? Hold on, let me see if that's on me. Did that stop? Yeah. 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 No, there's like an echo. Hold on, let me see if everyone is. Sorry, guys, one second. I'm going to mute everyone again. Give me a second, David. I'm going to mute you. Okay. Is that still happening? Still happening. Hold up. Oh. Nope, stopped. Okay, so it was a phone. I see what that was. Okay. Okay, right, so basically, right. we're all faced with this this situation that we're in right now. Some people will forever identify with the way that the pandemic affected them, and, and others will, will find a way to get past it and rise above it. And so resilience is, is a huge part of a happy life. And so uh, I've met so many elders who have shared their stories. Uh, this lady right here shared a story with me. Um, she re vividly remembers as a young girl growing up in London and, and the bombing blitzes by the Nazis. And she, you know, she had a vivid memory where she had a, uh, she actually lost a couple of her friends. She was a little girl and they were running from the bomb, the Nazi bombs. And she lost a couple of her friends and, and she remembers how the a fondness in her heart for the kindness of strangers to give her and her family shelter in this time when London was totally destroyed by the Nazis. And that forever shaped her life. And from there she went on and she's a, a bereavement a grief therapist and to this day in her 80s she's on the front lines of the opioid crisis and she's a, a bereavement grief therapist still working and she, but she 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 learned from world war ii and she was shaped by it and she went on to have this career that she's very proud of and she's still very engaged and purposeful and it's all connected to that so that's how she showed her resilience um this is dr bob He's been a guest at several of my Drinks to Your Elders events, and he's a therapist who guides people through life's transitions, whether it's um, losing someone you love or a divorce, career change, and he still works now as a, and he's talking to people about how to get through this pandemic. And he talks about um, a caterpillar, when it goes into a cocoon, if you help the caterpillar out of the cocoon, you'll kill it because it needs to build the muscles in its wings and in, in order to release itself from the cocoon, and that's, those are the muscles it needs to ultimately fly. So we're all developing new muscles in this pandemic, and we're, we're learning how to evolve. And it may be uncomfortable. It may not be the way we wanted it to be. But if we can learn to embrace the challenges and, and what are you learning during this time, it can be really helpful in terms of how you move through this. Um, and, and sure enough, I, oddly enough, I should say, my kids – 
I have young children and they were doing a science experiment in March when this whole thing started. And we got a jar of caterpillars in the mail and watched them build these cocoons. And this is a picture when they, they came out of the cocoons before they flew away. And it was interesting because some of the cat, some of the butterflies did not survive. The ones that survived were the ones that um, hung to the lid of the jar and gave themselves time to let their wings dry. And those were the ones who were able to fly away. The ones that sort of like came right out of the cocoon and crawled around and didn't give their wings a chance to dry. They ultimately didn't fly away. And I don't know what happened to them. So this moment in a pandemic is a time where we can all reflect and pause, not feel like we have to be so busy, certainly not feel like we have to jump back into action. And it's a time to, to understand how we're going to come out of this differently, to, to let our proverbial wings dry and learn what we need to learn to come to this next chapter with, with new skills and new muscles. The next lesson I learned from this 111-year-old lady, the social worker put his hands on her shoulders to help her lie down because she was tired because she was 111. And she said to him, are you propositioning me? So she was still making X-rated jokes at 111. And it's so important to have a sense of humor. We have to remember that. You know, it's like uh, we all tend to take ourselves very seriously, especially right now during this intense time. And if just once in your day when you catch yourself squeezing really tight, if you could loosen your grip and remember to laugh. So just as an example, one of the um, – this is Dottie, and she's one of the elders who I – I'm interviewed for my book and she's in her eighties and she texted me the other day and she said, you know, she's lucky if she sees one person a week, she lives alone. So it's very lonely right now, but she still has a sense of humor. And she said in her text message, that, you know, we've survived all these years of unprotected sex to think now you could die from an unprotected handshake. I thought that was funny. And, you know, that's coming from a lady who's very lonely. So it's really important to have a sense of humor. I hope that wasn't offending to you. I was just passing on her sense of humor. And we have to remember to laugh, right? This is such an intense time. Uh, this is a, a lady. Um, there's another lady that I interviewed in my book. Um, and I want to share. I'll skip that one. So another thing that I learned from this 111-year-old when I asked, what are your secrets? How did you live to be 111? Like, what, how did you get to be so healthy, so deep into life? And she did not say that she does yoga and meditation. And she did not say that she's on the low-carb diet and she's not gluten-free. She said her three tips to health and longevity were sex, vodka, and spicy food. And that joie de vivre is such a huge part of living a good life. Um, in this slide you see on the screen, those are the five oldest people on the planet. It's always changing because these are people who are 116 or 117 years old. The lady in the middle, uh, was she died last year. Her name is Emma Murano. She was the last person on the planet who was born in the 1800s. And she drank homemade brandy every day. Another one of the ladies, um, she tries to get barbecued fried chicken at the senior living center and they try to take it away from her and she tells them to go to hell. Another lady went bowling every day till she was 104. So we have to remember, especially during this, this time that we're living through right now, to take a moment every day to loosen our grip and really savor and enjoy life. Uh, you know, so often everyone's so busy, we put our, our head on the pillow to go to sleep at night. We don't remember a single thing that happened that day. And who wants to live like that? And you might have heard the quote by Irma Bombach that she feels sorry for all the women on the Titanic who waved off the dessert car. So just remembering to have at least one moment each day where you enjoy and really savor life. Um, just, a, just a couple ideas, and then I want to have a question and answer with you guys, but just a couple ideas on, on what that means. So when I was... Uh, um, Almost all of our greatest moments and memories are the ones which are associated with our senses, the things that we smell and touch and taste. And yet the world that we're living in now, it's all very digital. And so when someone is in a moment that they want to remember with their children, their grandchildren, we take out our phone, 
we get a picture, video, we text it to somebody, post it on social media, and then that memory is a part of your phone, but is it a part of you? And so like I said, the greatest moments that really stay with you are usually connected to your senses. So the most powerful of all your senses is smell, because smell is the only one of your senses that's, that triggers a feeling before it triggers a thought. So scent-oriented memories are very potent. So for instance, when I was in high school, the urban legend had it that if you wore this kind of cologne, Dracar Noir cologne, it would help you meet girls. So before my 10th grade semi-formal, I had a, this was my date, and I grew up in LA in the Valley, so all the girls had the, the giant hairdo. And before my, my 10th grade date with Kim, I remember just putting on a ton of Dracar Noir cologne, and now in 2020, whenever I smell someone wearing Dracar Noir cologne, I, I, it triggers nervous butterflies. And it brings me back to that night in 1989 when I was 16 years old in the back of the limo going to get my, pick up my date with the giant hair for our formal dance. And, you know, no, no photo or video can trigger those kind, of, those kind of feelings. So it's really a great exercise, especially right now when we're so isolated and you're in a moment that you want to remember is to ask yourself, what does this smell like? What does it taste like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? And make it a part of you before you make it a part of your phone. And something to practice with each other, something to practice with your, with your children, with your, with your grandchildren, to live through your senses. So this is uh, Ron. I interviewed Ron for my book. And Ron is in his early 80s. And he shared with me the story. He had just lost his wife of many, many years. And he wrote a book about the last 61 hours where he sat by his wife's bedside as she lay dying and he held her hand and he grieved and he relived with her all of their favorite moments and memories together. And they were all associated with their senses. You know, they, he remembered their first date listening to jazz music in, in Liverpool and they remembered a vacation they took and the, the feeling of the, the ocean in Hawaii and they remembered in the summertime how they would watch the sun set over the mountains and they would have a round of golf and drink a glass of red wine. And they just had all these, he relived all these beautiful moments with us. And so I have a, um, uh, a rabbi in Los Angeles and there's a line in a sacred text, may God nourish us with length of days. And she always thought that that line meant, may we be blessed with a long life. But she said as she's gotten older and now we're seeing during this pandemic and the, and the tragedy of it all is that not everybody gets to live a long life. And so she's realized and reinterpreted that line from the sacred text, may God nourish us with length of days. And she's realized it means may we be blessed with long days. And I think we're all feeling that right now during the pandemic that these days are longer. There aren't as many distractions or disruptions. And so the challenge is can you make the most of these moments with each other, with yourself, with your sense of perception? Can you dig in and enjoy a long day? Um, sometimes the greatest days and the greatest memories are just a lazy Sunday afternoon where you're lying around with somebody that you love. So just, just some ideas to come to this pandemic and, and the challenges that we're facing and embrace the challenges and come to them differently. So I was wondering if I could ask you uh, the simple question, and maybe we could go off mute now. And oh, what's that noise? <laughs> and I was wondering if um, if you could share with me. If anyone wants to share the challenges that you're facing, first, the first question I have for you is what are the challenges that you're facing the pandemic? Does anyone want to share what, what's your particular challenge that you're facing right now? Okay. I move this into uh, gallery mode. Anyone want to share? Don't be shy. I'm not shy. <laughs> That's Myra. <laughs> All right, yes. Myra, go for it. I find that this pandemic is a godsend. Wow. I, I, I have a different attitude about it. I see clear skies in China, for instance, lower gas prices, 
um, I, I think it's a, it's a, a gift from God. When I had breast cancer, I also felt it was a gift from God. So maybe I have a different attitude than a lot of people do. Maybe yes. you can elaborate on the gift. Yes. Should I elaborate on it? I mean, you're the one who shared that it's a gift. Okay. Um, we have clear skies. We have climate change. We have, these are all the things that people have been trying to get. And finally, we get them. That, that's a gift to me. That's, that's one. Thank you so much. I mean, that's a lot of people. I think if you if you don't see this through a spiritual or a holistic lens, it can be really difficult. But if you're willing to see it like you just mentioned, I think it, it's a very helpful way to get through this. So I appreciate you saying that and sharing that. Does anyone else want to share? What are your? How are you most challenged right now? Is it lonely or do you feel isolated? Is that a struggle for anybody? No. I think it's just the feeling that you can't go out. I'm yeah. enjoying staying home. I'm finding things to do. I'm busy. But somebody's telling me I can't do something. And I don't like that. Okay. Thank you. But here you are in San Francisco at the Golden Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I could change it to the green grass. <laughs> How do you do that? I have to say. It out either. <laughs> We're going to do a session on that after this. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah I have to say that I've enjoyed it um, a lot. The, the first month was such a pleasure because I could get off the treadmill of every day running around going from this activity to the other activity, meeting this person and that person. And um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I still go out. I go for a walk every day. I've met neighbors, and we talk from a distance. This morning, when I was walking down a particular street, I could see the gate was open, and I was just looking in. There were all these golf balls on the um, lawn there. And he opened the gate and he said, here, you have to look at my yard. And he had this big uh, golf thing. It was the whole length of the yard. He had quite a, um, a good setup there. So I had a, a nice little conversation with him, talked to another um, a young guy about an antique car that he was working on in his driveway. And it just, it just seems to be a very relaxed time. Um, I think these talks that the rabbi is providing really adds a good dimension to every day. There's something new, something to look forward to, and it does give you a good social connection during the day. And, um, you know, I have everything I need. Um, thank God everything is good now, but uh, I do worry about people who really feel isolated and has a need. But I've been seeing kindness. We have an app called Next Door, and somebody posted that if you need anything, please right. let me know. And so many people um, chimed in and said, yes, I'm on board. Please let me know. I have this, I have that. So I think it's been a wonderful time for everyone hearing. I'll let somebody else speak. Thank you. You know, they, no one say, has any challenges. <laughs> they say in sales, you wait for someone to talk first, they lose. <laughs> Anyone going to talk? <laughs> My husband and I have actually enjoyed this time. We, uh, every day we listen to, you know, a podcast from Chabad.org or the Tikva Fund. Uh, and then your broadcast. We've watched the movies we want, we wanted to watch and, uh, we actually, I think we're 
quite content. But then we have each other. We're not totally alone. So, yeah. um, and thank you for doing these because it really does change up your day. Yep. We look forward to it. <clears throat> thank you. And thank you, David, on that one. Yeah, thank you. So how does that, what are the, um, what is something new that, does anyone want to share a new skill or a new, how you're coming out, how you think you're going to come out of this differently? Despite what Rabbi says by speaking first, I am learning how to use the computer so much <laughs> more than I ever could have done And I'm glad I'm seeing somebody laugh. It, <laughs> it's, and I like to make pe have people laugh, not make people laugh, but have people laugh. <laughs> Rhoda, are you uh, game? I'm, I'm feeling the effects of not being, being allowed to go out. My kids will not let me go anywhere for anything. My daughter is running <laughs> ragged, keeping me supplied with groceries and cat food and whatever I need. Um, I find that the day goes faster and I do nothing. I don't understand why. <laughs> but I turn around. It's okay. <laughs> the isolation is difficult. I will say I live alone. I do walk a little bit every day. I read a little every day on my computer a whole lot every day. But I am, there's no question that the isolation hurts. I can't have a kind of, when my daughter comes, she comes, drops the stuff up and leaves. She doesn't stay and talk. She doesn't want to contaminate me. And I'm worried. What if she gets sick? That would be mm -hmm. worse. You know, she's young. She's got a life to live. Uh, and that scares me. But other than that, you know, I'm managing. I just, uh, I don't mind missing the Mahjong and the meetings and stuff. But I do miss adult conversation face to face. What about learning? That was David's last question. Did you learn anything new over this? Uh... See, I'm pushier than David. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure the answers are there. Not, that, like not really something. new. The only thing that, that I can pull away from is, is that I feel that there are so many people, excuse me, that are totally ignorant and they don't understand the full dire consequences of not taking proper precaution. And I, you know, I got to stay away from these people because I don't want to get into an argument. But some, oh. when somebody says to me, it's okay if I get sick and die because if my kids don't have money to inherit because their businesses are out, then they won't Oops. have anything. But if you get sick and die, they won't have you either. So <laughs> a catch-22. <clears throat> that, that's the only thing that I can think of that I've learned that people are just frivolous sometimes. And in the beginning, I didn't believe in it either. It took me a couple of weeks till I realized. And then I it's said, well, okay. I'm home for the duration now, and I am. I think there are many. Myra. Oh, go ahead. No. Oh. What was that, Janet? Yeah, yeah I was gonna. Yeah, my phone keeps ringing, so I keep muting myself. Um, I I think that I think that it is not a gift. This is not a gift. Nope. It, it's just part of part of what we're doing to um, meet the challenges and um, uh, find um, calmness and find um, kindness in people. But um, it's not something that anybody wants. So, so I, I can't I can't agree with the the gift business and. Um, I, I'm a real sandwich generation. So I've got my mom and Rabbi knows um, Lillian, who is um, almost 96, and she lives exactly a mile away from me in um, Atria, Sierra Point. Um, and so um, the um, relationship uh, with mother and daughter, no matter, you know, I'm 73, no matter how old you are, there's still that mother-daughter um, 
challenges. And um, so we have done so well with each other at, at this time. Um, I, I'll stop off and, and bring her, bring her things. Um, she comes out with her mask. She comes outside because we can't go in. And um, it's just delightful. I, I walked over there this morning and she goes, oh, so nice to see you. Well, don't worry, your hair isn't as gray as you think it's, it, it is, Janet. You know, so there's that, you know, that type of fun that, that we are having with each other. So I have been widowed for 20 years and I do live alone, but I do have a very significant boyfriend who, and that's a huge challenge. Hey, lucky you. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a huge challenge because we don't live together. And he lives uh, also about a mile away from me. And, um, you know, he's wanting to get together much more than I am ready to do it because I, I still have um, fears. And I'm trying to do little baby steps, little baby steps. You know, if he comes in, we're still sitting outside in my driveway or in the very beginning when he would come in, I would spray him all over the place. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a challenge. So I understand. I understand. I don't know exactly. You know, I'm not his um, policewoman. I don't know exactly who he's been in contact with. And has he had a mask on? And has he washed his hands? I, you know, they don't know that. And um, so I, I understand that. Um, if you're living together with someone um, all the time, well, uh, divorces may be happening, and, and um, but then again, in nine months, there may be lots of new babies coming uh, around. So, um, yeah, so it's a, kind of a yin and yang, if you know what I mean. Okay, I'll stop. I talked enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, <clears throat> that's great. I mean, I think it, these connections are really important. I heard this happiness expert today say that to nurture, your social connections are really, really, really vital right now during this time to nurture your social connections because you can just isolate. Even if you have kids at home and you're married, you can isolate. And I felt that void at times. So to do something like this is revitalizing and invigorating and you, you guys, acknowledge that yourself so I appreciate the opportunity to to speak with you today and hopefully after everything goes away we can we can all meet in person uh, yay That's great. thank you David thank we, you I, I hope to arrange that with you one of the yeah. things that David has done that many of you probably do not know about but I thought was fascinating was a program that I went to, or an event, it was called Drinks with Elders. Am I saying it correct? Was that the title? Drink with your elders. Yeah. Drink with your elders. <laughs> um, which really was, I think, three presenters that I went when, at the event that I was at, three um, older adults that presented either story or their life story. David had a little bit of a back and forth in questions, um, but the crowd was younger. Uh, and the point was to mix and mingle and and uh, schmooze, I'm sure there was more to it than that. Um, but I know that uh, it was really nice for me to see it, to participate in it. I happened to know two of the people that were presenting, which was half the re I came because David invited me, but also uh, two of the people that were presenting I knew. And uh, I think that that's something that uh, once we start getting back together, it would be a really cool event to do with you, David. So either way, thank you very much. And uh, again, if you're interested in David's books, which I have two of them, I don't have the Yeah Dave book. <laughs> That's the original. Um, they are sold on Amazon. Like he said, life's, Life Lessons uh, from the Oldest and Wisest is one. The other one is Happy Happy as the New Healthy, I think is the correct title. But you can find <laughs> it. I included the link to his website. You can learn more about David as well. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you coming on today. And Maybe we'll do it again in the near future. You can talk about one of the other books. Love it. All right. Stay healthy, everybody. David. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 So Bye. just a note to everyone here. Um, we are doing a Shabbat to go next week.
Yay. So I'm sending out the email in an hour or less, so look out for that. Um, as well, um, tomorrow's presentation is about a Netflix series called Unorthodox. If you have not watched it, yeah. um, and maybe you don't know how to watch it or you don't have Netflix, at least read up about it. So at least you know more about it. Uh, my mother-in-law is the presenter on that. And you'll get to meet her if you haven't met her before. Um, she calls herself a Hasidic feminist. I included, <laughs> I included a link in my email so you can learn what that means <laughs> or what she means by that. Um, but that's going to be tomorrow, same time. Again, if you have watched that series, I think it's four. Mm -hmm. It's a four-part mini-series. You're you'll have questions probably you'll be able to have those answered um or you can just have questions that she doesn't talk about and you can ask afterwards so i'm looking forward to that there will be some people that are joining it that have nothing to do with us because they're all interested about it and my mother-in-law has told them okay i'm going to talk about it on uh wednesday with mm -hmm. our group so again feel free to welcome or invite people who have watched it maybe you talked about it with them <laughs> you have a lot more spots of people who can join on zoom so again uh, I look forward for that to that tomorrow. And then if anyone has any questions or chatting, we're always here to chat. Now is a great time. It's uh, I'm going to informally, what? I'm going to stop the live stream. So it will not be. What's the, name? Over the What's the name of it again? Unorthodox. Okay. Thank you. All right.